as our speakers leave. So the next session, the title is the Global Order Revisited Old Actors and New Alliances. And um, I'm going to introduce now the uh, distinguished panel as they make their way to the stage. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman bin Jassim Al Thani. The Prime Minister of Somalia as well, His Excellency Hassan Ali Kari. The President, again, of the United Nations General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces. The Foreign Minister of Romania, His Excellency Teodor Viorel Meliscana. And the moderator of this distinguished panel is Ambassador Wolfgang Ischinger, the Chairman of the Munich Security Conference. And those speakers are making their way to the stage now for the next panel. speakers for the next panel again make it to the front to the stage but we did say this is about networking as well so The ambassador is about ready to start the dialogue for this next panel. And again, it is the Global Order Revisited Old Actors, New Alliances. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to the ambassador. Well, good morning. Good morning, and uh, 
I hope everybody can find their seats again so that we can get started in just a few seconds. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Wolfgang Ischinger. I, I've had the privilege of organizing and chairing the Munich Security Conference, which today at this year's uh, Doha Forum uh, is one of the partners of the Doha Forum, and I'm extremely proud of that fact. In fact, the Munich Security Conference and Qatar have had a close relationship now for seven or eight years because one of our first um, ventures outside of uh, Germany was uh, here in Doha in 2011, so seven years ago. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here, and we will be discussing for the next hour um, with a brilliant panel uh, the state of the world and the enormous power shifts that are creating uh, uh, all sorts of disruptions and, uh, and problems for, I think, all of us, regardless of whether we are in the Middle East or in Europe or in Latin America uh, or elsewhere. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me very, very briefly, because you know um, that these panelists really don't need an introduction, let me, but let me briefly introduce them. Uh, Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces doesn't need an introduction because she's just spoken uh, a few minutes ago. She, of course, represents the global view, if I may say so, this, this morning, um, as the current president of the UN General Assembly, foreign minister of her uh, native country of Ecuador. Now, to her uh, left is uh, sort of the, our host foreign minister and deputy prime minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani. He uh, is an old hand in foreign policy because he was in a number of positions um, in the foreign ministry before he uh, was promoted to foreign minister and then more recently, a year ago, to Deputy Prime Minister. It is important for everybody to know that uh, Sheikh Mohammed is also the chair of the Qatar Investment uh, Authority and of the Qatar Development Fund. So it's a great pleasure to have you here as uh, representing the host country. And then we go to Africa, and I'm very pleased to have Prime Minister um, Hassan Ali Khair from Somalia with us. Um, when you see his CV, you can see that uh, Somalia has, has, has had a difficult history. He spent many years of his life more, more or less as a refugee, but then working on refugee issues uh, in Norway. Uh, so, Mr. Prime Minister, we're really happy to have you here this morning. And last, not least, um, I'm welcoming the Foreign Minister of Romania. Romania is, in uh, less than three weeks from now, going to assume the presidency of the European Union. So, you have in front of you uh, the senior most representative of the European Union for the next six months. And really a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Foreign Minister Melescano has had a very, very long and distinguished career. He served as foreign minister when I was still a very junior uh, diplomat in my own country. So it's a pleasure to have you. Now, uh, we agreed that we wouldn't uh, want to make long introductory speeches. But what I thought I should uh, try to do with these, with these four panelists is uh, to talk a little bit about not only the good news, the good news is that millions of people have emerged from poverty, that there is now um, eradication of diseases uh, increasingly. But as we see uh, the progress of humanity, we also see before our eyes as we speak in the present time um, 
a worrisome number of bloody conflicts, a worrisome uh, loss and lack of mutual trust. That's true in this region. That's actually also true in my uh, part of the world, in our part of the world, when I think of the um, crisis, the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. We have uh, shooting going on right in the heart of Europe. Uh, so the question uh, is really how, can, how are we dealing with these accelerating changes and power shifts uh, in, in the world? Um, what about the United States and its traditional role? Are we going to have to live without the kind of leading role which the United States has played for generations? What about China and its increasingly essential role in global politics? What about Russia? What about Turkey? What about Iran? The former minister of Iran is, is, is here with us today. Um, what about the problems here in the region? Um, the blockade on this country, the role of Saudi Arabia? And finally, what about the European Union? What are expectations from this region vis-a-vis -vis Europe. Are we doing enough? Are we contributing enough in terms of conflict prevention, conflict management, um, et cetera? So uh, let's focus not so much on you know, what happened and why. Let's try to focus on what actually needs to be done by us and by the big powers who may not be present, all of them in this hall this morning, uh, what should happen in order, to, uh, in order for trust to be reestablished, in order for conflicts to be managed better, to be ended more quickly, or even better to be prevented before they break out. So we have, of course, a view from the Middle East, we have a global view from the president of the General Assembly. We have a view from Africa and we have a view from Europe. And uh, with your permission, uh, Madam President, I'll start with the uh, representative of the host country, um, Sheikh Mohammed. Please let us uh, sh share a few thoughts with us uh, what, you, what your expectations are of the region and of all of us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Wolfgang. Uh, I would like, first of all, to uh, allow me to uh, welcome all the guests who are represented here, and we are very happy to have Doha Forum 18th edition with such a distinguished audience, and we welcome uh, all the contribution of everybody who are participating with us uh, today and tomorrow. We believe that this is also serving as a platform for dialogue and for engagement, a platform that bring up uh, some ideas. Maybe it won't be adopted by, by some of the governments, but at least it will enlighten uh, a lot of policymakers in uh, whenever they are uh, thinking about reshaping their policy. Uh, Ambassador, you, you were just mentioning about uh, the role of the big countries, China, Russia, United States, and the change uh, in dynamics in, in, the, uh, in Europe and the European Union. Uh, there is, as, as the theme of this plenary, you, you mentioned that this is a global order being revisited. We believe this is, yes, it's a global order being revisited, but it's not something that is new to us. It's, it's, it's a cycle which is every every few years or few decades it's been recycled and just uh, the time frame of these cycles has been shortened. And this is given for multiple factors, but mainly if you will think about the technology, the connectivity, the communication has been a major contributor to uh, uh, shorten these cycles of, of, uh, of change. So now the information doesn't need days or months to, be, to reach from China to United States just needs a part of, of the seconds, microseconds. So uh, we believe that this is, this is a main contributor for, for the change in, in the global order. 
and for the change of uh, uh, the view of the countries in, in shaping their alliances. Uh, when you also uh, refer to how regional alliances are now replaced by cross-continental alliances, this is a very interesting point because this, uh, the regional alliances are, are still valid and still very important because the region is always uh, sharing uh, the same uh, common concern and common interest. They are sharing uh, a common threat for their people and anything is harming any of the neighbors in, in the same region is a harm for, uh, uh, for his country and for this uh, and those alliances need to be revisited and this is where we can contribute uh, and this is not not only it's not the contribution of of big countries and and superpower but it's a contribution also for all member states in in, in the united nation all member states as part of of the region our countries who are here on the stage 20, 30 years ago. In Peninsula, that it's like just a tip uh, on this. And most of, of uh, the audience, especially from the West, maybe they never heard about, about Qatar. 30 years later, now everybody knows as Qatar as, as manaret of, of enlightenment in, in this region when we brought uh, a new education system, we brought a new uh, way of, of conducting uh, free media and free expression. When we brought those, all these new values to this region, uh, this is something that Qatar was pioneering. And now also, uh, when you think about Qatar as a platform for energy and energy supplies for the world, uh, we are blessed with resources, but also we are bringing lights now from Japan to United Kingdom. And this is all with the clean energy, with, with the supply of, of, uh, of the LNG. If you will think about Somalia, Somalia is a country which is suffering from a civil war. But if you will look at it in the last couple of years, there is a leadership and determination to change the status quo over there and to bring peace and to provide development. Uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Hassan Khairi, President Farmajo, all of them, they came with, with a new vision of uh, reforming their country, of reconstructing their country, and even uh, uh, looking at reconstructing their human capital by bringing their diaspora back, trying to attract them, to attract those Somalian talents, great talents who are living outside to come and to contribute to their economy. Romania, was 20, 30 years ago, if you will look at it, was locked behind an iron curtain. Uh, and three weeks from now, they are going to lead in, in, in shaping the EU policy. Ecuador, uh, beside their exports of uh, beautiful flowers and chocolates, they are now, they have their, their representative as the president of, of the General Assembly. And uh, she's contributing in uh, sustainable development goals, she is contributing, she is coming with an agenda uh, that what matters to small states and to small countries and to make the UN relevant for, for them. So if you look at the players are different, if you look at the regional alliances are different, if you are looking at the cross-continental alliances is, is different. What make those, uh, uh, those factors different uh, we believe that our, our contribution, the way we can uh, participate in, in shaping the future of those regional alliances, in shaping the way that uh, the governance between uh, the countries in the region, uh, we need uh, a new arrangements in our regions, in all the regions and across continents that have